Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing great and staying safe and healthy and sane and all that good stuff, you know? Um, today I wanted to do a video on something that has always interested me, but it's something, it's it's a, a procedure that I can't have done just because I am um, a vascular patient. So, and, and anybody that has any kind of issues with blood clotting and stuff like that, it's, it's not offered to. Um, and what I'm talking about is osteointegration prosthetics. What is osteointegration prosthetics? Um, I have a video today that I'm gonna show you guys and it shows the actual procedure of doing osteointegration and what exactly that is and, and how it works. Um, basically, it is a, it's a prosthetic leg uh, typically it's for people that are above the knee um, and it's it's a prosthetic leg just just like I have it's it's above the knee prosthetic however there's no um, there's no casting there's no no socket whatsoever it's a completely socketless system and how that works is there is again I have a video that I'm gonna show you guys and y'all can see a little bit more in detail of what I'm talking about and kind of you know drive the fact or drive the uh, drive it home a little bit for you guys and actually see what I'm talking about um, so <clears throat> basically the reason that they they don't offer it to to cardiovascular patients and people that have blood clotting disorders and and people that are on blood thinners and that kind of stuff is you do have basically you have an open wound that's going to be there for the duration of you know for the rest of your life pretty much is the way it's going to be so they don't really recommend it for people that have you know bleeding issues or clotting issues or stuff like that they recommend that we pretty much go with the same old style and system that everybody else has been doing for years and years this is still somewhat a a new thing that people are doing um it's not brand new it's been around for a few years but it's still somewhat in the the testing phase and you know you see a lot more prosthetics than you do osteo integrated people and um it's supposed to give you like i can i can hit the bottom of my foot you know like say if i was if i had the osteo integration I could hit the bottom of my foot and you can actually feel it. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. Your brain will actually recognize that signal of the against the bottom of the foot. Now, is it feeling the, the sensitivity of it? No, that's that, it, there's no nerves in there. So you can sit there and, you know, and tickle the foot all you want and it's not going to do anything. So it doesn't work like that. Um, I've heard people say that you can feel some stuff if you go like this against the bottom of the foot. I've actually heard people say that, yes, you can feel something like pushing against it, but it's it's not a tickling sensation. So that's, you know, where, where that kind of, you know, it, it deviates from the, the actual like nerve endings and stuff like that. So um, it's it's made to, to give you the feeling of your leg back. And um, it's also for people that ha are problematic with getting casting. Um, like some people's legs will fluctuate, meaning like they'll get really, really small. And then if they walk on their leg for a couple days or whatever, their leg will blow back out and it's swelling. And that's, that's not good. Um, if you can't wear your prosthetic, then you can't do things like you know go to your job or if you have a, a physically demanding kind of job you can't go to your job you can't go you know do things with your family you can't i mean it starts to hinder you from doing a lot of stuff we can we can get along pretty good with with just one leg but there's also a entire fucking slew of things that we can't do if we don't have our legs on so that's um that's kind of they, they did offer it to me, you know, and, and we did talk about it and I had to go through a, a small testing phase to see if maybe I could go with this like later on down the road. But to be quite honest, um, 
I don't want to. It's not something to me that I really look at as a necessary thing or something that, I mean, I have a good fit with my socket that I have now, the one you guys have seen my Vero's to. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's fine. It's fine with me. I don't have any issues with it. I get along just great with it. Um, so yeah, as far as the socket itself goes, I don't have any issues with it. So I've never really had to look into it as, you know, too, too deep as far as like, this is something we might need to do later on down the road. We just kind of looked into it just to see if it, you know, maybe who knows, you know, we can give it a shot later on. But right now we're just going to stick with the socket, you know. So um, I want to show you guys a video. Uh, this this video is it's not blood and gore and stuff like that. It's it's not, you know, somebody literally getting cut open and, you know, you, you'll see the process, but it's all computer animated. So I don't, I don't want anybody to think that I'm fixing to, you know, blow your mind with some some blood and guts and gore and all that stuff. It's not that. Okay, so you guys check out the video. Um, these are some amazing people. They know what they're doing. They know their stuff. And um, yeah, I'll be right back. And um, I have something, something really awesome to share with you guys. So some good news is coming my way. And uh, actually two things. And um, yeah, so check out the video and I'll be right back. Hi, this is Dr. Rob Rosbrook from Hospital for Special Surgery, and we're gonna go through an animation of osseointegration limb replacement in the femur. First is a, an approach to the distal femur, depending on the particular case. In this example, we're gonna excise some of the distal femur, so we need a generous approach for that and for the thigh lift. You reflect the muscle and expose the distal end of the femur, and then you perform the osteotomy of the femur, removing as much bone as is appropriate. Here it is several centimeters, sometimes less. Next step is taking routine bone cultures. Very helpful for knowing if there's any contamination. The next step is preparation of the canal. And that is done first with a reamer, serially increasing reamer sizes as is appropriate, followed by a series of rasps, also increasing sized until the optimal fit is obtained. The implant is a porous coated titanium implant as seen here, and it is then impacted into position with the optimal amount of force. Once this is seated, targeted muscle re is done in many cases. The sciatic nerve is then connected to an, a motor branch of an adjacent uh, muscle, and this helps with phantom nerve pain. The next step is purse stringing of the muscle to create an optimal muscle platform. This sets the stage for the creation of the stoma. The flap is optimally tensioned. The stoma is created, often done together with a plastic surgeon. In many cases, there is excessive skin. And so what was being shown here is the thigh lift to create the optimal soft tissue tension. And closure. Next is the abutment. This is the insertion of the dual cone. These are the parts that are sticking out. Care is taken with all of these tightening maneuvers to prevent torque on the implant. And so you see this is a tool that is designed to neutralize the torque. This is the dual cone bolt that is being inserted. 
This is called a taper base, which is impacted into position. Again, uh, the tool to prevent torsion on the implant and bone as the tightenings are done. The bushing is then applied and then the uh, bushing bolt. The bushing is what sets the rotation and the bushing is also the fail safe mechanism. Finally, the adapter is applied. The adapter is what the prosthetic leg will be attached to. Thanks for listening. I hope that this has been helpful. Okay, so you can see that it's it's quite an involved process. You know, it's it's not something that, you know, is for the faint of heart or something that, you know, I mean, granted, you're asleep while this is happening. You know, it's, it's a surgery that you're, you're totally under for it. So you're not going to feel any pain as far as them. I mean, you saw when they're sitting there like hammering in that's that's what they do they have a machine that holds it or a, a tool that holds it in place and they take it just bam 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 and then they'll trim it and start to you know wrap everything up but you guys saw in the video how it works now that's not something that i want to do but it's it's something that i wanted you guys to be aware of and know how that works and and what it is and that that is an option for amputees out there i don't really necessarily think it's for people that are below the knee because i don't really see how that would work um but it's definitely i know for a fact it's definitely for people above the knee and um obviously that's that's what i am so like i said you know i, I said it before but we did look into that that was you know just just kind of a let's just i'm just curious i want to kind of look and see if maybe that you know could be something we do later on down the road but it's it's not it's not something that i need or something that i feel is necessary um later on in life maybe but like i said right now it's it's not in the cards for me anyway, because of, like I said, you know, blood clotting disorder and stuff like that. It's just not, it's, if something happens internally, um, basically with that, once you have osteo integrated into your leg, like you've actually put the robotics and stuff into your body, that leg, if you ever have to have like any kind of, if, if any infection or anything like that sets up, you'll have to be what's called disarticulated. And what that means is they go up into the, the edge of, so I'm not flipping you off, but they go up into the edge of the hip and everything has to be taken out. So you go all the way up to the hip because the, it goes like, say, here's your bone. It goes all the way up inside there and almost meets at that, that neural at the top. So in, into your, your hip bone, you've seen the big, like, if you're looking at a hip bone, it kind of looks like this. And it goes all the way up inside there, almost to this knuckle that leans off to the side that goes into your pelvis. Your pelvis would meet like right here. And it helps, that's, you know, when you walk, your leg swings like this inside the pelvic cavity, inside there. So in order for them to do that, say this is your pelvis, they have to go all the way up inside there. And you like you guys saw in the movie, or in the, the clip I showed you, um so that is osteo integration um it's like i said it's it's a newer technology that they're working on and i personally don't think it's perfected yet um i've talked to a lot of people that have had it and they say that it is it's very very painful for the first you know maybe like four to six months that you have it and then after that it kind of slowly starts to taper off and the skin up around it will literally start to just kind of kind of suction and 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 hold tight to the actual prosthetic it doesn't like go like move with the leg or anything like that like your skin doesn't flex with it it'll literally like like you know it'll do like stretch stretch like so it don't just like slide inside there like a like a shock absorber or something like that um so yeah 
that's osteo integration and um there, there's lots of, of resources that you guys can check out um i'll drop a couple of, um, uh, links in the description and you guys can maybe go check out those videos they're from other people that have actually had it and um you can see videos of them walking and and you know that kind of thing it doesn't look much different than say you you know the videos you've seen of me walking so you know like i said it's just it's another variation of prosthetics that are out there uh it's not necessarily like i said for me but it's something that i definitely wanted you guys to be aware of and know that does exist so there you go now <clears throat> i said i had two things that i wanted to, to tell you guys i'm really really excited about okay tomorrow i go to the doctor um he is my prosthetic, or he's not the, the prosthetist, but he is a doctor that deals in limb loss and that kind of stuff. And he's the guy that I've been going to see ever since I first lost my toe. So, I mean, this has been years ago, um, almost 10 years ago. And uh, we've been talking and stuff, and he sees that I'm getting around really, really well with my stiff leg, the leg that I have now, you know, that I've showed you guys on here. That's a locking knee. It'll like lock into place and then it just kind of, you know, you just kind of go wherever. Well, this one, my new knee, my new knee that I'm so, you guys, pray pray for your boy. Pray for your boy that the insurance company allows it and they sign off on it. Um, it may be a little bit of out of pocket, but we're going to figure that out. I'm not asking for money. I don't, don't. We're not doing that. I'm just saying that it's, it may cost a little bit more out of pocket, but if he can write a letter of appeal and it does get appealed properly and the insurance company does sign off on it, then I'm going to be getting a brand new knee and it's not a C leg, meaning like a computerized leg or a microprocessor where it kind of does the thinking for you like you guys seen me testing out before when i first got my leg um it's not that it's a it's a mechanical knee that runs on hydraulics rather than microprocessors and that kind of stuff uh it'll have it has three different modes and in that it'll it has what's called stability control so if i'm sitting there walking and my knee ever decides to give out it won't just go bam and fall all the way to the floor. It'll go to a certain point and it'll find that it's falling real fast and then it'll just be like boom and catch itself and then kind of slowly let you kind of go back down to the ground and then kind of stand back up and be like, Whew, man, because falling and having that leg just kicked out from underneath you sucks. It really, really hurts. So that, oh my God, you guys. Um, it's called the College Park something knee. I'll put a video. Or actually, I'm going to put a picture right there of what it's called. And I'm very excited. I'm super, super stoked. Because this means that I'll be able, like, my legs will, like, I'll be able to do like this again. You know what I mean? Versus, like, step and then, huh, step, huh. So it's, it, it, this leg now, it doesn't bend at all. It's just like a it's straight leg all the way across. Well, now it'll be like, boom, boom, like an actual walking knee, just like your knee. So super stoked on that. Super, super stoked. Keep your fingers crossed for your boy. I'm obviously going to be keeping you guys posted on everything as far as that shit goes and how that works. And if they do say something, you know, like yay or nay, either way, you guys are going to know. And the day I go get it, you guys are going to go with me. So, there you go. I try to take you guys on every single adventure, every everything involving this channel. And I hope I'm doing a good job. I hope I'm, I'm keeping you guys informed on what's out there and, you know, the newest and latest products and that kind of stuff. Um, if there's any questions you guys have at all about anything... Um, by all means, put it in the comments below and I will answer everything that I can and try to get to every comment. Um, now, I told you I had two things. Here's the second thing. As you guys know, 
I don't have any teeth, okay? Well, I will possibly be getting my teeth in, I don't know, the next coming, say, the next month, I'll be getting my teeth. Um, I, I went and tried on the upper, uh, the bottom's not made yet. The, I don't have a bottom, it, it, like it doesn't exist. So I gotta still get that made but the top is done um it needs to be adjusted um i'll also uh, put a picture right here and you can see in the picture that you know it's kind of the teeth are they're kind of pushed out a little bit you know you can see how how the the front of the teeth it's like oh it's like i got a mouthpiece in that's because the back part of it needs to be a little bit more trimmed off so it can fit further back into my mouth so there you go but new knee new teeth so hopefully 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 fingers crossed my insurance doesn't give me any crap about either one of those and yeah your boy's back to he's he's good things are happening you know good things are happening good things are coming my way um with my laptop and everything now i'm starting to put out a lot more better content um i've got some interviews coming up that y'all don't need to know about that right now but trust me this is we got some cool shit coming your way and um and yeah that's it that's it so osteo integration feel free to go back and check out anything you want on that um it's very very interesting even if you don't have a prosthetic or something like that it's it's still kind of neat just to see what else is out there. You know what I mean? The other advanced robotics that we do have available to us. So that's kind of what I want to keep you guys on the cutting edge of. And, you know, you guys kind of understand and know what's going on. And, um, and yeah, that's it. I love you guys. I hope you all have a great day, a great weekend, a great life, a great just work week everything i love you guys so much i can't tell you how much i appreciate you guys being here y'all could be anywhere in the world and you chose to be hanging out with me today that means the world thank you so much i love you all and uh, i'll talk to you soon bye We all got